Hey everybody, Andrew Piotrowski from Engearman.com and today I'm out here in my boat shed. Um, actually just kind of cleaning up from Memorial Day weekend. I uh, had a bunch of people over. We did a, a ton of paddling this weekend out in the Chesapeake Bay. Um, so it's kind of boats and sand and life jackets everywhere. And my dog Jack here will make an appearance. He's chewing on some hopefully old rock climbing rope. And if it is new rock climbing rope, it will soon be old rock climbing rope. So today I have this boat from Boat. It is a inflatable kayak. The company name is Boat, B-O-T-E. They're probably best known, I think, for their inflatable paddle boards. Um, this is actually my first experience paddling any of their boats, um, but I've you know, definitely paddled a ton of inflatable paddle boards and a ton of different kayaks and canoes and whitewater stuff and all kinds of fun floating toys. So I've tested this boat for probably three or four months starting in the early spring and it is called the Zeppelin and it is 12 foot six inches and it's really designed to be your Swiss Army knife of boats. It can kind of go anywhere and do anything. Um, so let me kind of tell you about some of the things that I've used it for and then some of the great features. So in early spring here in the eastern shore of Maryland, it's generally pretty cold, maybe, you know, maybe not Alaska cold, but cold for the south. So it's 35 to 45 degrees most of the time, windy, always windy. The wind is, the wind is always howling out there on the river and in the bay. Um, so I, the first couple months, I use this pretty much exclusively um, in chop, like one to two foot waves, windy conditions, cross waves, you know, not a lot of boat wake at that time of the year, but lots and lots of hard conditions. And this thing excelled. I mean, it, you know, while it has some waves that come over the front, it has this really cool self-draining hull. So you're not pumping water out. It just drains the water itself out. Um, it reminds me of like, you know, that red boat back there is a surf kayak and it has all these holes drilled in it so that the water can just flow out. It's the same concept here, except you can't really see the holes, but they're on the bottom. Um, I've also used this kayak most recently, this past weekend, Memorial Day weekend. I had a bunch of friends down and we took it out in a variable amount of conditions, right? So the first day it was flat. The Y River was very flat. And I took this out in tandem mode with my wife and it was really a joy to paddle. We loaded it up with our cooler, some beach chairs, umbrella, went out to some islands, hung out on the beach. Really cool for that. Um, and then I also paddled it by myself this weekend on a day that was a little choppier um, and it was really just a joy to paddle. I mean, it, it eats the waves. The waves just, it goes right over them if they're big enough or it just smashes through them with small waves. Um, you know, I can see this boat being good for whether you maybe live in a city and you don't have time to put it on your roof to go kayaking after work. You can just shove it in the bag, inflate it at the water, put it in your hatch back, whatever you need to do. It's easy to store, easy to blow up. You go take it out in the water. Um, or I can see this, maybe you live in an area where fishing is really good. It's a, it'd be a great fishing boat, which you'll go into. Um, or maybe you live somewhere with some swift moving water. Um, maybe the, you know, the Delaware River in Pennsylvania or you know, some of the big rivers down south or out west. It'd be nice for down river, just touring, hanging out. Um, and then if maybe you live near the beach, you could take this in the ocean. I mean, you could, it's just like one of these surf kayaks. You just paddle it out, go over the waves. So it's really good for all those, all those things. Um, so let's kind of walk through some of the key features. So right off the bat, it is really redundant when it comes to inflation, right? Some of my complaints of paddle boards, of paddle boards, like you can't see it, but I have one over here, one over there. They have one chamber that you inflate. So if you, you know, let's say you have an emergency, you, you put, I don't know, you put a fishing hook through it or you pop it out on there, you're pretty much out of luck. You're gonna run out of air and, sorry, my dog, other dog's barking outside and you're gonna have a problem. With this, there's three main chambers. So you have an inflate, inflatable chamber that inflates this pontoon. You have an inflatable chamber that inflates this pontoon. And then you have this inflatable chamber, which is the deck. Additionally, there's two chambers in each one of these chairs that inflate. So there's a lot of redundancy, right? So let's say an emergency happens and you put a hole in this pontoon, you still have flotation. While you might be, not be able to paddle as fast, 
you're not going to sink. You're not going to be in any danger of drowning. You know, you're going to have something to hold on to. And it, you know, not that this would happen because this is super durable, but if you, let's say you popped everything, you, I don't know, you smashed into a jetty or you know, scraped it on a bunch of rocks, the seat would still serve really well as a flotation device. So besides the point, I still think it's really durable, but it also has a lot of redundancy. So some things I love. Probably my favorite feature is the ability to go tandem or solo. You know, so right now it's set up in tandem mode and it's really easy to fix the, switch it over to solo mode. So boat makes it really easy. They have these tie downs and it might be hard to see, but there's one, two, three, four, five tie downs on each side and they're labeled tandem or solo tie down. Makes it really hard to confuse them. So to go into, to go into solo mode, it's very easy. Just pop these little things out. Loosen them up first. And the seat comes right out. I'll just sit this over here. And then to move this over into solo mode, you would just pop this one off. Same exact system. Slide it up and put it on the solo mode high downs. And I'm not going to take the time to tighten it up super well in just the interest of time, but you get the idea. So now it's in solo mode, you can kind of see some of the awesome features, right? So starting at the top here, you got these grab handles to make it easy to pull it in and out of the water, up onto the beach, out of the beach. Let me let my dog outside here. Hey Jack, go ahead, go ahead. Good boy. Up here, you got this mount here, which would be for like a GoPro or some sort of camera. Moving down, you have this deck rigging. And if you're sitting in this seat, you can move it up, it'll probably be a little closer up here. You can easily access this deck rigging, but there's still plenty of space to stand if you wanna cast standing up, maybe you're fishing, or maybe you're just hanging out, but it's plenty of space. Um, if this is in tandem mode, your feet are kind of going right where this deck rigging is, but it doesn't eliminate the deck rigging. You can still use it. You would just put your feet on either side of it. Like I have a life jacket in here right now. It's not really a big deal. I did miss this splash guard here. This does help a little bit with water not coming. Moving down, let's get a little further. This feature right here, this Magnapod is really cool. It's a magnet and it holds your glass right in place or your mug or anything, you know, where you got some sort of thermos, it'll hold it right in place there. Uh, maybe you're tying flies or maybe you catch a fish and you have a knife. It allows you to store your gear without worrying about it floating away. Pretty cool feature. I think you could probably also, if you had a tackle box, you got a magnet on the bottom, you could, you could stick, put it there and keep it in place. Um, moving down. You know, you have, you can see them here. We also see them here. It has these really cool straps to hold your paddle in place. So if you're anchored fishing, you can put your paddle here and it's out of the way. Or I use this to, I actually put a wheel on this like a little wheel cart when I wheel it down to the water. It's about, you know, an eighth of a mile down. I put the paddles, paddles on here and just hold them in. Okay, you have another set of grab handles here. I did miss one thing. There's a plethora of D-rings. So up front, you have D-rings here, you have D-rings here and here, D-rings on the, on the deck rigging. And as you go, there's just a lot of options to add different gear, secure different things. Um, I know that Boat sells a number of different attachments you can add on, which will go back there. I'm sure the D-rings would help with that as well. I'll cover the seat in a second, um, but the seat is here. Moving to the back, not 100% if you can see it or not, um, but there's these two black, I guess we will call them a receiver, and Boat has a system where you can have these clips that slide in here, they'll hold a rack for a cooler, or I think they have a bar that you can put in if you want to stand up and cast. I actually have them right here, and I'll show you what they look like. So these guys right here, I, they slide right in to here and lock in and just give you some versatility to add 
different things. It's customizable. Like I said, it's like your Swiss Army knife of guns. Moving to the back, you have some more deck rig. You have some more D rings here. Um, you see, I got a I got a throw bag still on here from the weekend, um, and some pulleys and stuff just for hauling boats. That's all in there. So awesome features on that. Moving into the seat, I'll just take the one that's already out. These seats are awesome. They might be my favorite feature, to be completely honest. They inflate the two chambers, one on the top, one on the bottom. They have a little offset to make them sit like perfect inside the boat. And like I said, they're very easy to get in and out. So this past weekend we went to the beach, we packed these big beach chairs and we left them in the kayak because we took these out and they were way, way more comfortable than your Kmart or Walmart. I don't know if Kmart still exists. Walmart beach chair. Um, so they inflate really easy. They're super comfortable. I actually go to a car show tomorrow, completely unrelated to any of this, but I'm bringing this seat because it's way more comfortable to sit in than the other seats I have. On the back of the seat, you have these, I guess you would call it a daisy chain. You can store some gear. Last weekend, I actually just like clipped my hat to this. Uh, and it went to blow away. And then you can stick, I don't know, something in here, your phone, maybe a map, um, some snacks. You could probably get like two tall boys in there if you needed to, but each seat has those. Going to the paddle, let me grab the other paddle. While I don't believe that the paddles come with the kayak, sometimes when you buy a paddle from a company that exclusively makes boats, like paddle boards or kayaks, they're maybe not the best. These, however, are really, really nice, and I have, you can't see, but I have a full rack of paddles over there. They are fully adjustable, so you can make them a little longer, a little shorter, and you can also adjust the offset, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, the older paddles I have, they have to like push a button and slide it. These are not. It's the system, it's the same system to adjust the paddleboard paddle as it is this kayak paddle. They also have this really nice padding on them with like a little bit of like an ergo grip, which makes just it nice to grab. You know, it's pretty forgiving on your hands on a full day paddle trip. And then you got these little cups here to stop the water from running down. And they're pretty light. You know, I mean, they have some added features and they're adjustable, but they're, they're still fairly light and they feel really durable. Um, I actually, stood up and used it as a paddleboard paddle one day. I've like we'll put a lot of pressure on them in the waves and I haven't felt any like giving these or any breaking, cracking, anything that would make me nervous about them. Oh. Alright. Final feature I want to go over right now is two is the pump. So this pump inflates really really fast you know it has a couple different valves you can make it inflate on the way up and down or just on the way down comes with the kayak um, i have a number of these this one seems to inflate things a little bit faster than the other ones it might just be newer technology but it's a really nice pump i like that it's white and not like all black sometimes i feel like they get hot when you're stepping on them and they're if you leave them out in the sun or by the car um, you know, you could also, if you're in a rush, you could buy a pump that goes into your car battery, but I find like you don't need that just because it's not, sometimes on a paddleboard, you feel like you're pumping forever, it's one chamber. This fills up pretty fast, this fills up fast, really nice. Next thing here is we have this bag. This bag is the one that came in, and it is pretty cool. It's really durable has two pockets and has these really nice big fat zippers that move really easily with nice zipper pulls um and it feels a little bigger than you actually need to put the boat in it gives you a little extra space for gear or water bottles or snacks but also if you're in a rush right like say maybe you went paddling after work and you have to deflate this to put in your car and it's getting dark you can kind of just roll it up quick and shove it in here and it'll fit sometimes with paddleboard bags you gotta like precisely roll them up, like maybe a tent where you got just barely fits in the bag. Not here, plenty of room. Um, it also has wheels on the bottom, so you can just make it a little easier taking it down to the boat launch or wherever you're launching from. 
Uh, finally, I know I'm not gonna flip it over to show you, but there are three fins on the bottom. There are two two-inch fins that are permanently mounted. They're small. And in the middle, there is a fin that is pretty much the same as a paddleboard fin for the most part is removable and go in and out. Um, I find that the kayak tracks really well on its own. Um, I found it to be pretty quick with two people in it. You know, it is wide and it is full of air. So it's not gonna be as fast as, you know, these, you know, narrow 17 foot touring boats, but is definitely fast enough that it's enjoyable in the water. And it's a heck of a lot more comfortable. You sit up really high in these seats. So you're not like crouched over and like you're on a kayak, you have plenty of room to stretch out, even in tandem mode. Um, it does, sitting up high does make you a little susceptible to crosswinds, right? You're gonna feel that wind more because you're higher, but it's definitely a worthy trade-off to be comfortable in these big seats. Um, one last thing I missed, missed, which is a cool option, if you were to take this seat and move it back into the tandem location by itself, you've got quite a bit of room for one or two dogs. I took my smaller dog, the one who was running around here. He loves the water. I had him out here um, and he loved it. He actually was comfortable laying down. He's got the soft foam that you can really nice on the feet. He enjoyed it. Doesn't get super hot. Um, or, you know, let's say you're doing like a, I don't know, let's say you're doing a five day camping trip down river. You could sit in the back, put all your gear up here, and it would probably be fine. It really just depends on your preference. You know, for me, I'd probably put it in the middle and evenly match the gear out, but there's just tons of options with this boat. So again, if you're looking for a boat that is easy to inflate, easy to transport, and you can kind of take anywhere, right? You don't have, you know, I got 15 boats in here or 14 boats in here. You know, I have different boats for every water. Not everybody has that option or the space, this would be the boat to get because you can take it in all the water that all these can do. And it's one boat. Um, I think my only disclaimer is I did not get to test it in like anything over class one or two white water. Uh, I probably wouldn't, I don't know. I probably wouldn't take it down to, you know, class four, class five rapids, but I think it could handle lower grade white water. I think it's durable enough. Um, and I think it's maneuverable enough. So, you know, definitely something that you can handle. Uh, I wouldn't buy it as your only whitewater boat, but I think it really does well in a variety of conditions. So again, this is the Zeppelin 12 foot six from Boat. And check it out, I'll put a link in the review. And you guys have a great day.